This is a MacBook Pro. This is a very expensive laptop. When I first started learning how to code and I started going to meetups, all the cool kids in the room, they all had these laptops. And obviously I was like, man, that's when I make it. That's when I know I'm a real developer. When I have a sweet MacBook Pro covered in sweet stickers. To me, it was a status symbol. To me, it meant I made it. I became a real developer. So much so that when I got my first job as a developer, they gave me an option to choose between a Mac and a Windows computer. Up until that point, I had been learning on my old laptop that had Linux installed on it, and I was used to a Unix-based system, so I used that as an excuse to get the Mac rather than the Windows computer, only because I really wanted to use a Mac. And guess what happened? They gave me an old, crappy, nine-year-old MacBook Pro that was like this thick. <laughs> well, you live and you learn, right? After a while, they upgraded our computers and I did get a new MacBook Pro eventually, but it was almost a year later and I had to use that old crappy MacBook while most of the guys that were on Windows actually had better computers than I did, but I didn't care. I had a MacBook. I made it, right? So many of you out there are probably wondering, is a MacBook Pro the best laptop for programming? Well, there's only two things that make a MacBook Pro the best laptop for programming. One, you're an iOS developer. Two, you cover it in stickers. Honestly, you can code on anything. If you're trying to save some money, use Linux. It's open source, it's free. I really bought into the hype. I have a lot of buyer's remorse for my laptop. I worked in a Mac environment all through my first job. So obviously when I left that job and I needed a personal computer, what did I do? I bought a MacBook because that's what I was used to working in and that's what I felt that I needed the program in because I wanted to. And honestly, I could afford it, but I have a lot of buyer's remorse now because that was a $2,600 computer. Do you know what $2,600 buys you in a Windows world? Right now, I just upgraded my desktop because I want to start live streaming. That desktop is way more powerful than that MacBook and it's a fraction of the price. You can get a sweet Dell XPS 13 for like 1600 bucks and the specs on it are way better than this Mac. This is an entry level MacBook. This thing right here, this thing, it's, it's got 16 gigs of RAM, it's got 512 uh, SSD, and it's got the, uh, I think the Radeon integrated graphics card. And you know, and then they upsell you, right? They upsell you and they, now they made the touch bar, this thing that I never use, it's a gimmick, it looks pretty cool, but I never use that thing. You don't have an option anymore to get rid of the touch bar. You have to have a touch bar now. That's a $300 upgrade that they force you to get and don't give you an option. They're basically shafting you for, for a touch bar that you're never gonna use. I sound like I'm hating on Mac right now. And honestly, they're really good computers. They're really nice. They're super sleek. This thing is thin. It feels good. It looks good. I remember when I got it, the first thing I did, I had all these stickers that I was saving up and I plastered them all over to the point where you couldn't even see the thing. And I felt like such a poser that I had to take them off. I'm 35 years old. What the hell am I doing with a computer full of colorful stickers? Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I felt like I was trying to signal to people that I was this super cool developer and I had to have all these stickers. I had my GitHub sticker and my JavaScript sticker and all these different stickers that I threw on there that I collected over the course of a few years because I was anticipating that one day I would own a MacBook Pro of my own and I can cover it in stickers. And I did just that and I couldn't live with myself. I had to remove them. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't need a MacBook Pro. It's not the best laptop for programming. If you're gonna be an iOS developer, you you pretty much don't have a choice to go with the Mac unless you wanna make a Hackintosh, which is honestly a lot of trouble, but you could go that route. I know there's a lot of people that have videos on how to build a Hackintosh, and it's, it's a thing that people do, but why? why? Why spend all that extra money just so you can have the Mac and feel like you fit in with all those other cool developers? Because honestly, there was a big part of me that got one because of that. And I'm not ashamed to say it because I look back at it now and I learn from my mistakes and I don't think that my next laptop is going to be a MacBook. Just that's, that's the honest to God truth. I don't see the value in spending so much money on a computer that isn't any better than 
another computer that's half its price. So really, if you're on a budget, if you're thinking that you have to have a Mac to become a programmer because it's the best laptop for programming, it's not. Get over it, trust me. And I know I'm gonna get some hate in this video. I know I'm gonna get some hate comments because I know there's a lot of Mac fanboys out there and fangirls out there who just love MacBooks and they're just like, no, no, no. It's the only thing I'll code on. I, can't, I won't even touch anything else. My, my pristine, pretty little fingers can't touch a Windows computer. God forbid that I have to work in a Windows environment. I've been working in a Windows environment for the last year and a half. I code every day on a Windows computer. Here, I'll show you the Windows computer that I work on. It's nothing fancy. It's a it's it's dusty because I just it just sits there. It's a it's a Dell Latitude because it's what my company gave me, and that's what I work on all the time. That's it. It gets the job done. I work in Java, Spring Boot. I work in SQL, I work in Angular, I'm a full stack developer, and I run all that stuff on that computer, no problem whatsoever. And it, and it works just fine. And honestly, VS Code is made by Microsoft. Microsoft makes Windows. TypeScript is made by Microsoft. .NET Core is made by Microsoft. Microsoft right now is leading the way in open source. They have the number one text editor. TypeScript is super popular. So who's to say in the next few years that Microsoft doesn't just take off and leaves the MacBooks, you know, in the dust? Because what is MacBook doing? They're making their computer smaller and slimmer, but then they're soldering all their hardware in there so you can't upgrade it ever. You buy 16 gigs of RAM, you're stuck with 16 gigs of RAM because that's the only way that they can make these things so thin. They solder it in there and you can never upgrade. You're stuck. So what you have to do is sell your computer in order to buy a new one. And who wants to be doing that all the time? Who wants to be upgrading and having to sell their computer every couple years just to get a new one when they cost three grand? And if you want a MacBook with an i9 and a terabyte of SSD and 32 gigs of RAM, you're gonna spend like $5,000. You can buy a Windows laptop for a fraction of the price that has all those same specs. And I know some people are just gonna say they just don't like Windows and that's fine. At that point, it's a preference, but don't say it's the best computer for programming. Don't say it's the best laptop for programming because that's simply not true. You can get the job done. Unless you're an iOS developer, then you're, then you're kind of stuck. But the truth is if you're an iOS developer, you chose to go that route. So you probably were already in a Mac ecosystem and you probably already enjoyed Apple products and that's fine. But for people out there who don't know what the best laptop for programming is and think that a MacBook Pro is the best laptop for programming, it's simply not. Don't get too hung up on it. Don't worry about all those other cool developers and all those cool YouTubers that have their MacBooks sitting in the back like I do because honestly, we're just kind of showing it off at that point. And that's what I'm doing with mine. So, you know, bust my chops for it, whatever. I get it, but it's my computer and it's the one that I gotta work on for my personal projects. And now that I hooked up my Windows PC, I don't know, I might not be using that laptop as much when I'm sitting at my desk because my Windows PC is just as powerful. Actually, it's probably more powerful than that MacBook is. So I might be using that more often. I do use the MacBook for movie editing. I have Final Cut Pro and I like it for those features, but again, it's not the best laptop for programming. All right, I felt like that was a huge rant. I just wanted to get that out there because I know a lot of people get hung up on that. So if you're deciding whether or not you should buy a MacBook because you're just learning how to code and everyone keeps telling you it's the best laptop for programming and you can't afford it, don't go getting into a ton of debt to, to get one of those. Don't, buy yourself a decent little thousand dollar Windows computer, dual boot Linux on it if you wanna learn how to use a Unix environment and dual booting Linux will be enough to teach you how to work inside of an Unix environment. And if that's what you're trying to learn, then do that and save yourself a ton of money. And you know, if you want, you can still cover your computer and stickers. Nobody's gonna judge you for that. I will a little bit because I kind of I kind of think it's funny now when I see people who just have their computers covered in stickers because it's kind of goofy to to do it. It it really is almost a status symbol at this point. Like you're only a developer if your laptop has a bunch of, you know, coding stickers on it. All right, with all that said, I feel like I've been talking enough crap about MacBook Pros. 
I still use mine every day, but you don't have to buy one if you can't afford it and you're trying to learn how to code or you're trying to figure out if it should be your personal computer. And if you want to do it and if you want to buy it and you can afford it, then do it. Who cares? It's your money. But really think about it before you make that purchase because you might have some buyer's remorse just like I did after buying a MacBook Pro. With all that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on becoming a self-taught programmer and learning how to code. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.